mnemonics for the lungs. Ivar, this looks really exciting. We got your diagrams and your memory palace up on the screen. How are you doing? And where do you want to take us in this episode of our magnetic medical mnemonics? Well, I'm great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, today I thought we would talk about uh, the lower airways and uh, specifically the bronchial tree and uh, the alveoli. Awesome. Um, yeah. So we'll everybody who's joining some, us, uh, hit that thumbs up, get subscribed if you aren't already subscribed. And yeah, where do we start? Well, we, we, we're going to start uh, with the trachea. And for those nerds uh, among us, uh, the lower airways usually start with the, what, what do you know as the, the, the little bump hair uh, below the epiglottis and the phalanx, uh, those kind of structures. But we're going from the trachea. Um, I got a big cause... tray with a giant key. Ah, and uh, it's going, key. yeah, of course. <laughs> with yeah. <like> a... <laughs> awesome. I, uh, I, I have a. Uh... I also use Trace. Trace. Uh, I use uh, Trinity from the Matrix. Nice, nice. Yeah, she's running on some uh, some uh, railroad tracks with a couple of trays. Right. And then uh, she bumps into uh, uh, IKEA. Uh, oh, good. We in Scandinavia, I love uh, IKEA. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> in Berlin, I used to yeah. live near a restaurant. Great restaurant, beautiful memory palace, and it had this ikea logo sticker but it said yeah. i don't ikea like i don't care <laughs> it was so cool <laughs> awesome so cool. yeah we can stick it on our trek yeah beautiful beautiful don't don't yeah. don't hit it too hard though jeez <laughs> ah no but that's the, uh, that's the clever thing you see we have these uh, blue sort of uh drawings here mm. and that's the cartilage Right, and that's actually part of the thing that uh, keeps the trachea, um, keeps it to its shape, and uh, it's it allows us to be it allows it to be uh, sort of manipulated a bit. Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we can. Uh, this is the schematic here of the of the bronchial tree, and we'll get back to that. But we could uh, jump to. Uh, yeah. This is the cross section of our trachea. And you see how we got cartilage and we got some smooth muscles. And we got some receptors. Uh, and I got a couple of different cells. Uh, and they're all summarized up in tunica adventia, tunica mucosa, and tunica fibromusculocartilaginea, sort of. Yeah, that's a good one. Fibromusculocartilaginia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I u I used the whole pillar just for that alone. <laughs> for those who are uh, watching this and you don't know what Ivar means with using the whole pillar, if I were memorizing something like this, you know, a pillar is going to start up here in a memory palace, and then it would be, you know, something for fibro and something for musculo, uh, you know, and. You, you could you could separate it into threes, fives, tens, et cetera. But the idea is image, 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 image. So what were your images for this long word? <laughs> yeah, um, you see, just to start, uh, they have all uh, these three. They all have tunica. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm using this big yellow fin tuna as a sort of bridging uh, figure for, for, the, uh, for them all. Yeah. And for this... A big long word. Um, I'm sort of dividing up to fibro, musculo, and cartilage during now, which is uh, it's a hard word when you're a Norwegian. But F is uh, always uh, Faramir uh, from Lord of the Rings, and he's uh, he's chucking in and eating a lot of hay because that's a lot of fiber. And <clears throat> then he throws some over at Elon Musk. Who right. lifts <laughs> off this great heavy hay ball because he's so muscular? Uh, which I think he is now because he's training for this uh, MMA uh, fight. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is he? Is he that. really? <laughs> <laughs> I think with Mark Zuckerberg. I can't believe this is happening, but that's another story. I'm sure that's a psyop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a distraction from uh, other things. 
it is it is so that's my two uh two first in the the pillar and then uh secondly we have uh jimmy carr the comedian mm. he's tilting a car and flipping it over uh so it squashes a whole lot of guinea pigs yeah, it's interesting you mentioned a car because one of my first mnemonics when I looked at this just minutes ago was Lou Ferrigno for the F. Lou Ferrigno oh. played the Incredible Hulk. And of course, what does the Incredible Hulk usually do? It flips ah. over cars. <laughs> ah, that's great. And Lou Ferrigno, of course, is famous for having big muscles. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you don't need a pillar. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but you could... You know, have him with Hasbro toy cars and Elon Musk would be really great. But, you know, I always try to pick the figure that it gives you more, right? So uh, Lou Ferrigno already having muscles, being already associated with throwing cars and flipping yeah. cars and all that sort of stuff. That's kind of, com that, that's really the, the magnetic Mary method principle of compression. Yeah. Of course, I don't have a I don't have an exam, uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> that that is the kind of image that I would do uh, as much as possible. And you know, the same thing, just uh, as an alternative view, big tuna fish is great. But for me, I would forget that because it's it's so abstract or not specific. I would have like um, one of the Looney Tunes characters wearing a tunic, and yeah, that's that, that's better. Yeah. Um, I, I do some free diving myself, so uh, I've been uh, dreaming about catching a big tuna for uh, some time. Well, that uh, makes it but, more specific then, which is the principle. It makes it more specific, but still sort of vague because it's not a it's not a specific tuna. I just know about the species. I've never seen one, so it's you not could the also one have uh, away or anything. You could also have, I believe, one of your fellow uh, Scandinavians. I don't know how much you want to uh, how how big of a fan you are, but isn't isn't it Greta Thunberg or something like that? Uh, ah, yeah, 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 the famous, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she could be a great uh, bridging picture for this. And, yeah. and then her wearing a tunic, going on an adventure, her, you know, expelling mucus, uh, her with Lou Ferrigno, and he's getting like really angry because she's misrepresented all the time on social media or whatever, right? Um, yeah. That kind it's of official. I'm re replacing my tuna with uh, Greta. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But that's that's yeah. always the principle with the magnetic Mary method is, you know, you make it over time. You just get better and better. And you, you often find just amazing, much more magnetic figures just by thinking about it, having discussions about it uh, with other nemesis, if you can find them. And uh, yes, we should we should maybe one day have uh, some live sessions for our fellow medical mnemonic fanatics. Ah, that would be great. Okay, so let's go. Uh, let's go a bit uh, into this uh, tunica mucosa. Uh, wow, that's great. Uh, it's easy to memorize. Just uh, yes, yeah, she's uh, expelling mucus or covered in mucus and tunica adventia. Uh, I know. Do you say Advent in uh, English with uh, the period before Christmas where you light the candles? And... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Something with that. Candles and... Yeah. Perfect, perfect. All right. But, but let's go a bit deep into what these uh, contain and, uh, and what they do. Uh, uh, sorry, just skip back uh, a bit. So you see, uh, there's two cross sections here. Uh, and in the circular one, you can see the cartilage goes around the trachea, like Down a horseshoe. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't cover it completely on the back, but it covers it in the front. Okay. And then uh, the pink uh, is smooth muscle. Uh, and smooth muscle is different from skeletal muscle in that you can't control it uh, uh, voluntarily. So it's... Uh, it's innervated by the nervous system. So uh, when you get stressed, these dilate, and when you relax, they contract a bit. Uh, which makes sense, right? Because when you're in fight-flight mode, uh, you need a bigger radius 
to get more air in and out. Mm, interesting. So that's the yeah, that's the beta two receptors. That's the sympathetic nervous system. We call the stress nervous system, and the muscarine receptors. That's the parasympathetic, which is the relax part of it. So maybe a little bit of a side question, but while I got you here, yeah, I yeah. was just reading something about breath withholding in meditation. Oh yeah, and the person was saying that a lot of people make the mistake of when they're holding their breath that they're actually clenching their throat, and that this can yeah. cause a lot of health issues. And it wasn't that he's recommending that you don't do breath withholding exercises, but to avoid holding your throat, I don't know, uh, or closing your throat in any way. And when I examined my own breath withholding, I thought, oh, wow, I, I am kind of clenching down at some level. And yeah, yeah, I did uh, develop a bit of reflex. Uh, so I'm just wondering if I've uh, messed with these systems or is that further uh, down still? I've never met anyone who's damaged their... Uh the trachea or uh, airways because of breath holding. Uh, but then again, I haven't worked with the bar or trauma or anything like that, but I've been doing a lot of breath hold holding myself and uh, especially on uh, full inhale breath holds. Uh, I, I think it's natural to close off some and I can de definitely relate to the tension felt, but I can't say any anything for if it damages. Right. Well, he he actually used the term health problems and it was so vague. Health but, problem. Uh, I just thought I'd ask, uh, well, well, it just came to mind as you, <laughs> we were looking at, at this uh, yeah, example yeah, yeah. of the throat here. I'm just a student. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a nurse. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. Yeah, yeah. And an extraordinary one, too, because you care so much about getting the knowledge deep into your memory. So. Yeah, 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 but it's it's really important, and it's also where uh, I've come to learn a bit fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fun is the key in learning for sure. Yeah. All right. So, what happens okay. next on our plan here? Well, uh, <clears throat> we have something called uh, silated columnar cells, um, and they're respiratory epithelium which means it's the cell that covers the inside uh, of the of the trachea, the lumen in the trachea. Mm. And these are little cells uh, that I've drawn in yellow hair, with little hairs on them. Right. And the, hair, and the hairs are really important because they do like this little motion all the time up towards uh, your pharynx and your, uh, your well, color it your mouth, right? Um, and then you have these goblet cells you get their name because apparently in a microscope they, they look like wine goblets. So uh, and they uh, excrete uh, mucus. They uh, remind me of the this... nodes of Ranvier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except they they were blue before, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were blue before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they excrete uh, mucus. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and the hairs, mucus. the hairs that are they called? Is that what's called the respiratory epithelium? Uh, actually, the whole cell is the respiratory epithelium, the yellow ones. Mm. Uh, and the cilia is the hairs. Ah, okay, okay. So what they do is they, they sort of whip the mucus up. So uh, you're, the inside of the airway is always sticky, covered with the mucus. And uh, the mucus has enzymes that kill bacteria or other path pathogens, right? Okay. So this is part of your barrier defense uh, for pathogens. Uh, anything, any bacteria or virus that comes in here and attaches to, uh, to the side will get killed. And then export it up and you can swallow them or you can spit them out. Your choice. <gasps> Got it. Yeah. So, um, cartilage, I, I got some uh, for the smooth muscle. Um, I always remember S is uh, Professor Snape from Harry Potter. Mm. Uh, and he's, uh, he's uh, rubbing his uh, muscles with some oil. 
while he's singing a smooth operator. <laughs> I was just thinking about that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, I might get a. Then, uh, I get. I might get some Smurfs. Smurfs making a smoothie out of mussels. Ooh. Maybe out of Lou Ferrigno's mussels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's great. And you can keep them next to each other. Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, sort of uh, beta 2 uh, receptors and muscarine receptors, they, they, they stick already. But uh, for muscarine, um, you could probably use uh, Elon Musk again. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. Elon Musk, I would have her... She's Swedish, I think, the author Karin Boy. Or maybe it's Karin Boya. Uh, I don't, you you might like her. She wrote this book called Colocaine, and uh, okay. so when I see muscarine, I would think of Karin Boya or Boy. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's B O Y E. Uh, so she's Scandinavian wow. anyway. And Colocaine yeah. is a really interesting novel. It's about a truth serum in like a 1984 kind of world, and you know people take the drug and then they start saying what they really think. In a society where you're supposed to self-censor, it's amazing. Woo-hoo. Anyway, muscarine, uh, muscarine. That's what I would think. Musk and uh, Karin Boy. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Do you have anything good for uh, beta, beta two, or because I, I always have beta two, beta one, and I, I yeah. use my B. That's boromir. But do you have anything good for beta? I do indeed. Uh, so <laughs> aleph, aleph, beta. You know the uh, letter uh, in the Hebrew yeah. alphabet. Uh, or actually, sorry, I think that I'm thinking of the Greek alphabet, um, and, and it's because bet in uh, Hebrew, I believe. Uh, so, okay. but that's where I would start. Then also a guy named, um, try and think of his name here, uh, Michael Hyatt. He said that the great thing about the internet is that everything is in beta, at least when it comes to books, like uh, digital books. It's easy to just keep changing them in websites and so forth. This video, not so much. We, we'd we have to re-record it. It's not in beta. So I, <laughs> I would think of like him with uh, with one of these letters that's pronounced beta. And uh, then also Michael Bay, who directed lots of movies, like the Transformer movies, and Bane from Batman. Uh, yeah. and, and then for the two, if you have your number systems worked out, you could use any number of number systems. So there's several number systems, but one that's very direct is just a swan. So, yeah. you know, Michael Bay throwing the Greek letter at uh, a swan. Now it's like beta two, um, something like that. Yeah, 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 that's great. I actually have, a, I have used a swan here uh, for one of the next uh, images. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there we go. So this is uh, sort of the... The granular, it's not the granular anatomy, it's the micro anatomy. But yeah, there there are some other cells here as well. There's some basal, uh, uh, I didn't mention the um, connective tissue, right? It's always uh, like, um, you know, last time we said when in doubt, uh, just say homeostasis. Yes. <laughs> also, in anatomy, when in doubt, there's probably some connective tissue there. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, and that's the tunica adventiva. It's laying around the trachea and it's just sort of like a capsule. Uh, I'm I don't know the use of it, uh, at least not in anesthesia, but it's there and it probably supports. And then, uh, and is it is it like comparable to the the packaging or whatever you call it, the wrap on a sausage? Yeah. I think it would be, yeah, probably. Okay, <laughs> but that's my unqualified opinion. Uh, <laughs> I've, I, I have very little thoughts about the tunica adventiva. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's there. Um, but actually, in the in the tunica fibromusculocartilaginea, uh, there's some uh, the the supportive tissue. It's it's collagen and. Um, uh, elastin so it provides support and some sort of flexibility in it elastin it's it's very easy to remember it yeah mm. it makes it elastic right okay so then we can move on to our tracheal uh, our bronchial tree 
Okay. So, um, this is sort of a, a schematic of how the the trachea goes down into the bronchi and how they divide. And I've written numbers here. Zero is for the trachea. One is for the left. Uh, so yeah, sorry for the the main bron uh, bronchus. Mm. And then uh, two is the lobar bronchi. Three is the seg segmental bronchi. And then you see from four to nineteen, you have bronchioles. Okay. And uh, my sources differ a bit from when the bronchiole starts, but bronchioles is when you start to lose the cartilage around. Um, because the diameter is getting so small that it doesn't need uh, cartilage to stay in its shape anymore. Um, so anywhere from four to generation nineteen of uh, bronchi uh, <laughs> bronchioles is where you start to lose the cartilage. And as I understand, it's a bit sort of a gradual process. So you see, I've drawn in some blue things here. Yeah, 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 and then now uh, we uh, move on to the respiratory bronchioles, uh, and uh, the alveoli at the at the end here. And as you can see, I've also drawn in a sort of column with colors uh, at the right mm -hmm. to illustrate that uh, tunica mucosa uh, that stays on in uh, it covers the cells all the way down to the end of the bronchioles and the smooth muscles are all the way down all through the respiratory bronchioles and then the cartilage sort of drops off okay yeah and then it ends up in uh, in your alveoli so this is Sort of a, a very important schematic, uh, and what I have not drawn here is a correct diame diameter of uh, of the lower ones. You see, I've drawn in uh, one point five to two point five uh, centimeters mm. uh, in trachea, uh, and from the bronchioles, they're all less than one millimeter, so they're, they're really really small. So you're not drawing to scale, in other words. No, 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 no. <laughs> it would be very hard. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so it's an important thing to understand. They, they sort of decrease. Um, and if you imagine you have this tube that's uh, this, this big, maybe uh, yeah, two and a half centimeters. Mm -hmm. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller down to one millimeter and even even less. It would be hard, right, to push air through that harder and harder. And um, as I mentioned in uh, in the blood pressure episode, flow through tubes. If you if you uh, if you have the radius, uh, then the resistance, I think it's sixteen times doubled. Okay. Okay. Right. So the resistance gets really high here. But the clever thing is that you're not pushing the same uh, air through one bronchi. You're, they're dividing, and there are actually millions of these uh, uh, bronchi, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Or bronchioles. So, so you can imagine it just as an upside-down tree. And the big total surface area of the bronchioles and the respiratory bronchi makes it so that it flows easy anyway. Okay. Yeah. Is there any measurement for the total surface area, or does that matter? Well, I haven't uh, really memorized it uh, for, the, for the bronchioles, but it's yeah, it's big uh, for, for the alveoli. It's, um, it's about 50 square meters to 80 square meters. So oh. about, about a t tennis court, and uh, that's doing gas exchange inside of your lungs. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, right? Uh, and it's it's similar, a bit less, but similar in the, the bronchioles. So you're going from a, a very 
small cross section to a huge cross section, right? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, that's that's a nice mnemonic image right there. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Court. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's memorize this uh, all stuff right. here. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, with we've all uh, already already been through uh, the trick, yeah. Yeah, uh, actually, one uh, since uh, I'm studying for anesthesia, right? So I always like to bring in what's relevant for me. Uh, you can see uh, the left main bronchus and the right main bronchus, and the right main bronchus is sort of steeper, and the left main bronchus goes more to the side. So when you're uh, intubating a patient, if you stick the tube out down uh, too long, it will sort of always go, uh, almost always go into the right uh, main bronchus there. Or also if, if people uh, uh, miss swallow uh, mm. and uh, put uh, stuff in their, <laughs> in their throat and get it really far down, it will usually go to the right just because of the anatomy there. Right. And is that optimal or they just go with it because that's the way it goes? Uh, it's it's uh, suboptimal uh, <laughs> to, to have the tube in just one lung, yes. And uh, it's, yeah, I'd say it's suboptimal to get choked out. Um, but it's optimal to know it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, I'm glad you, you raised that. I, I never would have thought about that, but yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So um, again, bridging figures, super, uh, super good here. What you got? Um, I got uh, my man Bronn from Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Have you watched Game of Thrones? Not really. I mean, I've seen a couple of minutes of it, but <laughs> it was, uh, let me just say with all due respect to Game of Thrones fans, it was uh, something that I slept through more than I actually watched any of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But I liked the Tudors. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically the same show, just with uh, only one crazy king and and no dragons. <laughs> okay, okay. But do they have a crazy cool sellsword named Bron? Not that I remember, but you know, I can imagine Charles Bronson in game ah, of thrones okay yeah, yeah okay maybe one day when i'm older i will i will get into game of thrones <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but i would probably use charles okay. bronson yeah bronson's good there yeah so i, I use my man uh Bron, uh and he's uh i've dressed him up as a waiter and he's serving two main courses right so the left and the right okay um, and he's really angry about it, so he's cursing a lot. So there you get the Broncos. Oh, right, right. Curse, yeah. Broncos. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. And then uh, we go to the low bar bronchi. Um, just a sort of extra knowledge here. Um, in the right lung, there are three low bar, low bar bronchi, and in the left uh, lung, there will be two low bar bronchi because the right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes. So again, <laughs> not drawing ana anatomically correct here, but uh, yeah. Right. Low bar. Um, embarrassingly enough, I've been dancing limbo at some parties uh, recently. <laughs> <laughs> so... The low bar is really natural uh, to me. Um, right. So uh, Braun is uh, trying to go uh, dance limbo but, uh, beneath this very low bar. Uh, and he's followed by some lobsters that are trying to get him. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. that dance is good. I'd probably think of Lisa Loeb. I don't know if you know her. but No, no. She was quite famous when I was younger, when I was in university and she's just a singer <laughs> singing songs. But uh, <laughs> that name is, is spelt L O E B I think. But anyway, her dancing under a bar would be quite good. 
Um, you can also have Jennifer Lopez. And yep. the good thing about Jennifer Lopez for me is that she's my image for 59. So then that can be bi-directional in a way. So that's another aspect of the art of memory. Like another way that you could think of something like bronchi or bronchus is nine is B or P, four is R, zero is soft set, S, C, Z, N is two, et cetera. And you can, whenever you can't come up with images, you can always just think like, what would be my image if I was looking at this as if it were numbers? So Jennifer Lopez is 59 because five is L, nine is B or P. So Jennifer Lopez being a dancer is a little easier to imagine her dancing under a bar or on a bar at a club or something like that. But either way, Lisa Loeb or Lopez, it's just that whenever you can use that bi-directional aspect, I highly recommend it because it, it, it just gives you an extra memory hook. And ah. I also, you know, have memorized decks of cards. And so that also makes for the nine of clubs. And you can just imagine like a nine of clubs on that area. And on the nine of clubs is the bar where Jennifer Lopez is, uh, you know, doing her dance. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> I know that sounds like super complicated, but if you really get deep into memory systems, it is so powerful to have your number systems worked out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bet. I was really struggling with the, the cusp part of Broncos. Right. Uh, so that would be a straight up 70 could... right away. Yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, we already said we got Kiss the Rock Band there. Yeah. That's my 70. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Then I've, uh, I've learned something new today. Perfect. Um, yeah. So you've got so, brawn, and now you go down to segmental bronchi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course, we have to use a segue, right? Um, mm. So brawn is on a seg segue, and for this mental part, uh, oh, I should have a, I should have an image for you, but uh, I use Mentok the Mind Taker from the Harvey Birdman series. Fantastic uh, character, Mentok the Mind Taker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> controls people's mind. Uh, so he's on the back of Braun and telling him to go forward, go back on this segue. Yeah, that's good. I, I don't know that guy, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that whole show, Harvey Birdman, for people who want uh, good uh, mnemonic characters. Wow. These old, uh, old superheroes uh, who are now doing uh, law practice. It's, it's awesome. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. Okay. Cool, cool. And then we go uh, further. Uh, I have these in a, in, a, in a pillar because I'm a super fan of the pillar technique right now. Mm -hmm. um, so below the, the, say, uh, the segueing brawn, I have bronchioles. And then I just, I, I, I just have a horde of tiny, tiny bronze. And they're doing a sort of rebellion there. Uh, but... Whenever things are eols, they're smaller. So that's what I want to remember here. Mm -hmm. So I got plenty of him, and they're really small. I'd probably use and, something like, uh, like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh getting older. Like He's really I'm complaining about getting old. Yeah, okay. So Eeyore, that's a donkey, isn't it? Yeah, he's something like a donkey. I, I think that's what he's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, super, he's too depressed. Uh, he's too depressed to belong to any category. <laughs> <laughs> he probably is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the Norwegian, his name is Tussi. I don't know where they got that from, but uh, okay, your. <laughs> huh. Yeah, and then uh, then respiratory bronchioles. Uh, I just have my bronze playing uh, bagpipes. Okay. Yeah that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, uh, yeah. Rez, I might start with something like Ren and Stimpy. Ren dressed as a pirate, and he's on a 
reservation or he has a reservation at a table or something like that. A reservation at a table in purgatory. <laughs> ah. <Whew. laughs> ah yeah, or he's a this. Tory in the political sense and he's wearing a wig or something like that at, oh, oh, at a uh, purgatory restaurant. What's a Tory? Tory is just uh, one of the political parties. My uh, political science okay. days are are long behind me, but I think they're often associated with um, these wigs. But it might be that it's the Tories and the Whigs, and the Whigs are associated with Whigs, and, and they're different. But uh, nonetheless, in Canada, we used to use the word Tory, and I believe that we called it conservatives. And the Tories is still, I think, used quite a lot in the UK. Uh, but maybe it comes from territory. I don't know. Uh, Ooh. something like that, but whatever it's, a, it's basically, if you belong to this party, then you're a Tory. It's okay. More or okay. less. Yeah. Yeah. Super. It could be that it's related to territory because purgatory is a territory. So, uh, who knows? <laughs> awesome. It's always fun to think about uh, where the where the words come from. It's, it makes for great connections. Yeah, Etym Online is one of my favorite websites. Etym Online is an online etymological dictionary, and so you could put in respiration, and it's going to show you probably that the word spirit is in there somehow. I don't know, ah. but that that's my guess, right? And it will give you more clues about where the R part comes from because respiratory yeah. probably like re means to repeat. So repeating the spirit. And then yeah. if Tori is related to territory, then it's the territory in which you repeat the spirit of the air, you know? something like that. Yeah. But Man, I don't know all, that for sure. I'm, I'm just guessing. <laughs> well, language is poetry, right? Language is, yeah. is self-referential. It refers to itself to build itself out of itself. Yeah, yeah. And that's why in that's... medicine that you know they put a lot of emphasis on knowing your prefixes and your suffixes and those origins because it it can help you just guess what a word means. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of fortunately they don't have th that much emphasis on that in nursing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but well, again, that's why you're still... the extraordinary nurse who is taking that extra <laughs> step. But yeah, yeah Etam yeah, yeah. Online, I highly recommend. It's a great website. Okay, yeah, well, I'll check it out. So, continuing on to our alveoli, this is where gas exchange happens, all the magic in the lungs. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you can see, I've drawn uh, capillaries. Blue ones are um, transporting the, uh, what you call, opposite of oxygen rich. Uh, Carbon dioxide? Deoxygenated. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah, it's carbon dioxide uh, there as well. But deoxygenated blood to the mm. alveoli, picking right. up oxygen and carrying it away to the. So that's going to come into the right side of the heart. The deoxygenated. It's coming from the right side. It's coming, yeah, yeah. And then from the right side of the heart, it's being pushed out into what we call um, the lung circulation. Okay. Yeah, uh, which is a low pressure circulation. Oh, okay. and then uh, yeah, from uh, um, the right side, that's a high pressure circulation. And just to 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 understand why, um, the left side of the brain, no, sorry, uh, of the heart, has to pump out through uh, the whole body, which uh, down on the capillary level is a huge surface. Yeah, and then uh, you kind of need a lot more pressure than just to get it around the lungs. And also, the lungs are sort of at the same height as the heart, which also allows it to be a lower pressure system. Right. Uh, and this is again why it's these bronchioles and respiratory bronchioles are relevant for anesthesia because you see, okay, we lose the cartilage. What happens then? Well, these airways tend to collapse uh, when you're undergoing anesthesia. 
Um, Oh, okay. so some of the some of the um, medicines we give influence the smooth muscle and maybe contract them a bit. Um, and we have to sort of keep that in mind all the time to give medicines to open them again. Um, you know, to stimulate the beta receptors and uh, dilate these. Do they still use Karare to paralyze you? Um, um, I think I know that as uh, Curacit, maybe. Yeah. It's the the arrow poison. Yeah, yeah. From the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, This is it's still a great. use it. Uh, yeah, um, it's part of uh, the immobility part of anesthesia. So, uh, an anesthesia has four parts. It's uh, Um, the hypnotic part, you're going to sleep and you should also forget it. So it's the amnesia and then it's the analgesia yeah, for the pain. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, the muscle relaxant. So um, I still use that. Yeah. But it's not what they use to put you to sleep. Yeah. That's uh, that's different. So uh, it's, uh, at least in my education, it's a, uh, It's a very big focus on uh, and not uh, taking away people's ability to move while still keeping them uh, conscious. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so we got some uh, some nice uh, nice few fun facts there about uh, the respiratory bronchioles. So that, that's why I bothered to learn this to really understand what part of the airways collapses and 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 why. Right. Good And then to we know. can go on to, yeah, right? Then we can go on, yeah, the alveoli. As I said, this is uh, where the magic happens. Mm. So these are, again, super tiny kind of bladders, and they form uh, like these um, sort of clusters, like grape clusters. And that is what provides a huge surface area to your lungs. Mm -hmm. And that you're able to take in air and then have this, uh, that the air is always in close contact with the blood, right? It's not sitting in the middle of your lungs and not being in contact with the wall. It's always in close proximity to, uh, to the blood, right? Okay. Uh, and, uh, and these here are, are quite basic, um, sort of to, to memorize you got your type 1 epithelial cells and you got your type 2 epithelial cells and uh, you got the, the basal lamina um, so for the type 1 uh, I've got uh, Theoden King from uh, Lord of the Rings and he's uh, using uh, a huge candle for type 1 to fight off a swan for type two. So he's oh, there's your swan, type, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's my swan. Yeah. Uh, so he's using his candle to fight off this one with his one hand. And uh, he's using his uh, other hand to sort of trying to play bass, which is <laughs> plucking right. it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So he's uh, a sort of distracted bass player. But then we got the type 1, type 2, and the basal lamina. Yeah, base. That's a good image. Um, there's also Baz Luhrmann, who's a film director. Ooh. Uh, He's made for this. There is a process called lamination, where you are laminating things with plastic, covering them with plastic. Something like that I would probably do. Um, then epithelial... Just thinking you have the the Faith No More album and it had a song, I think, or it was either called Epic or it had a song called Epic, something like that. Um, so, and Peter Thiel, Epithelial, um, something like that. Yeah, work it out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. So, um, and I, I usually don't need anything for capillaries, sir. But, um, well, if I did, with... I would use Captain yeah. Crunch. And Captain Crunch is the same guy that I have for the capitate in the uh, 
in the bones, the cap or not the capillary bone, sorry, but the uh, the oh, I'm having a brain blip here. But I know we have the navicular, car the car carpal. Well, yeah, the carpal no. bones. That's right, right. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. and one of them is the capitate bone, and that's next to the hamate, I believe, and the uh, the trapezoid, and then there's the trapezium, and then you have the uh, the scaphoid, and you have the lunate, and the triangular, and then the pisiform. <laughs> I love that stuff. So ah, I would relate cap capillaries to the capitate in the. Uh, Oh man, I'm so tired and it's so hot here in Australia. You have no idea. So you, you, <laughs> mnemonics sometimes uh, gets gets in the way. But the carpal bones, yes, <laughs> I almost yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost couldn't get that word back again. Uh, I have to think back <laughs> to our previous uh, car that we were talking about earlier with Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Greta Thunberg. Yeah, ah, Greta. Oh. Okay. All right. Whew. So yeah, uh, just to go quick, quick through what these uh, hair do. So the type one cells, really skinny, and they're skinny uh, because there should be a small distance between uh, the capillaries, uh, the blood in the capillaries, and the gas in the alveoli. Uh, so super skinny. Only thing between them are the basal lamina, and the basal lamina is. Um, sort of uh, connective tissue with elastin, which makes the lungs really elastic. Mm. And then you got the type 2 cells, uh, and uh, they are the ones, they're producing surfactant, I think. Uh, it's surfactant in Norwegian, and uh, yeah, I just forgot to look it up. <laughs> well. But uh, yeah, that's... Um, that's this sort of, yeah, it's this, uh, it's not really soap, but it does what soap does because uh, on the inside of your um, alveoli, you will get a, a small uh, water layer. I've sort of drawn it here in a, in a, in a light blue, but it wasn't as clear as I've, I'd hoped. Mm, I see it, yeah. Yeah. So, what happens when you have water in a small space? You have surface tension, right? It's uh, it's this sort of thing that makes bugs be able to go on water, and and it's also what forms drops in rain. It's the surface tension. So water always want to want to like reduce the area. So if you didn't have the surfactant. It would just the alveoli would collapse because there was is water there. Mm. So uh, the surf surfactant, <laughs> I think, uh, contains some ions, some proteins, and some phospholipids to uh, reduce the surface tension there. And the chemistry is uh, really advanced, but uh, yeah, just memorize it and uh, throw it up on your exam and see <laughs> if you can get away with it i think <laughs> i think you yeah. can do it yeah yeah so uh yeah this was a sort of rough walkthrough of the lower respiratory system mm. um it's uh yeah i thought it was about time we did some raw anatomy and not just physiology and then we can can come back to all the crazy crazy stuff with their uh, respiration physiology uh, another time because uh, boy does this rabbit hole go deep and what a great rabbit hole it is I mean imagine having a tennis court inside of your chest that's 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 a rabbit hole like none other <laughs> uh, it's amazing it's amazing uh, wow yeah <laughs> it's, it's always fun to think about uh, and uh, just as a side note you know, uh, the body is always really mecha mechanical, right? So since you have capillaries and there's uh, fluid flowing through those capillaries, mm. the lungs will be best perfused at their base, right? At their diaphragm. So um, when you're standing up or sitting, uh, there will be more blood going through the base of your lungs than the through the top of your lungs. And then... Um, you mentioned the uh, yoga and uh, some breath hold 
Mm. Uh, and yogic breathing is always breathing with your with your diaphragm and thinking okay well okay that's at least where uh where the alveoli is best perfused right yeah so optimal way to breathe yeah i think so yeah and uh suboptimal way to breathe is lying on your back being uh, anesthetized uh Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> while being uh, operated on uh, yeah while being operated on yeah yeah well heaven forbid that we ever have to do any of that but thank you for your service in helping people who do have to go through that yeah <laughs> i'm actually going through that myself in november i have a knee that's being uh it's going to be operated on so i'm oh. super stoked to get the patient perspective <laughs> oh are you yeah. okay <laughs> I guess I guess if you're a medical out. professional you have a different relationship to it than than patients like myself who are just like no thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, this will be my first time being a proper patient so uh, really? let's talk again after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully that goes good for you and uh, I'm sure it will. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hope so. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So anything else yeah. we got to cover on this episode? Uh, no, I think uh, that's that about uh, does it. That's my mnemonics. All right. Well, I got a question for you. So yeah, when it comes to placing these associations and images in your memory palaces, yeah, what do you need to do in your mind to, and I know the answer a little bit has to do with the pillar technique, but what do you do in your mind to make sure that you can visualize and remember where on the anatomy those terms work? Or do you just know it by virtue of the memorization process? Or how is that working for you? I, yeah, I, I sort of just know it, but I I sort of do it strictly in in order, right? I, I sort of cheated because I, I've drawn the schematic here, so... Um, <laughs> oh, I, I wouldn't call drawing cheating. I wouldn't call drawing <laughs> no, no. cheating. I would call that actually teaching yourself. And we know that the hands help form memory better. It's called haptic memory. So far from cheating. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. this is advanced uh, accelerated learning technique. Yeah, and it's definitely part of it because uh, I've drawn it and uh, written it up in this order, and then I just try to be consequential but okay i go from top and to lower right from yeah. from the biggest from the trachea and down so um i thought as I, much but i wanted to yeah. for people watching just make that a little clearer yeah 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 of course um yeah that's what i do and um as i said uh, i've uh, i'm a really fan of the pillar technique right now um I've used it a bit before, but now I, I try to cram as much in there as I can. I love and, the pillar uh, technique. It's, a, it's amazing. Um, I sort of struggled with it uh, in the beginning because uh, having sort of floating images in space was harder for me than just to put it on a surface. Mm. But um, I've sort of solved it but while with uh, visualizing actual pillars and then sometimes the people just crawling on them or being inside them and also just i'm in addition to having images i draw them as like uh, egyptian uh, what do you call it hieroglyphs hieroglyphs, yeah. hieroglyphs yeah on mm -hmm. the wall so i try to like do it double and make them as cartoons on the wall and alive images oh that's great that's great well thank you for yeah. sharing your experience and all your thinking and if you're not subscribed, hit that thumbs up, get subscribed, hit that thumbs up, even if you are subscribed and uh, leave us a comment if you have things you would like to see covered. And we will certainly be doing some more of these episodes. Yeah. All right. Thanks, all right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anthony, for uh, having me on here and uh, listening to me for all this time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And thank you for it was great for helping people. And uh, really appreciate it.